Hey, bag ladies and bag dudes. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Ask Sarah, my weekly Q&A chat. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on this Tuesday evening. I have a special guest here with me tonight. This is my daughter, Violet. Violet, how old are you? I am nine years old. So Violet will be subbing in for Danny tonight. Uh, Danny's actually taking our son, William, to the dentist to have a cavity taken care of. So Violet is in charge of the technology, putting the comments on the screen, swapping out the photos. So Violet's going to be handling all that tonight. So if you have a question for me, be sure to leave it in the comments now. I'm going to answer some questions right now at the beginning of the chat. And then we'll talk about some projects that me and Violet have been working on. So if you have a question, be sure to ask it now. And we saw a lot of questions come in before the chat started, both on Facebook and YouTube. So thanks so much for asking your questions. All right, so we're going to get to some questions right now. I saw some good ones coming in earlier. Thanks, Violet, for putting all those comments up on the screen. All right, so I saw a good question about uh, denim fabric. I'm going to put, oh, Danny's got one on the screen. Thanks, Danny. Uh, Brenda says, I'm wanting to make the airplane bag out of black, white, and red flowers. The background is an off-white. Would the iron-on vinyl be too hard to work with on the outside of the bag? Um, that's a tough question. Um, I think especially if you're working with um, a Teflon foot or a walking foot, that'll make things a, a lot easier. Um, I, the iron-on vinyl should be similar to working with um, either faux leather glitter vinyl, things like that. So those are all fabrics that can stick to your regular presser foot. But if you work with either a Teflon foot or a walking foot, that should make things a little bit easier. Okay, another question. Um, Diane wants to know, have you thought of creating your own line of fabric? So a few years ago, I actually designed two lines of fabric for art gallery fabrics. Um, I actually have some behind me. Let me pull them out. So this was from the first line. It was called Jungle Avenue. The second line had some unicorns in it, and that was called Fantasia. But these are all from Jungle Avenue. So I did sort of a gritty floral with a asphalt-looking background. Um, this this print was my favorite. It's a black and white polka dot, but again, a little bit grittier looking. My the inspiration for this fabric line was city living. I live in Chicago, and I just wanted to incorporate a lot of that into the fabrics. Um, this was a print with elephants and actually the, the buildings in the background, uh, which are sort of lighter in color and have some swirly designs to them. These are actual buildings in Chicago. Um, here's a smaller filler print. I, I made a dress with this and it, it ended up looking really great. Um, here's another of my favorites. It's a pink text print. I'm a really big fan of text fabrics and I just worked a bunch of city type words into this fabric. And let me show you one more. Um, here's a green floral from the line, too. Oops. Got a lot of scraps in there as well. Um, this one was called Jungle Avenue. You might be able to find a few bits and pieces of my fabrics, uh, maybe on Etsy or the website Hawthorne Thread. So those are two good places to look if you're interested in picking up some of those prints. Okay. Pat wants to know, can you demonstrate rivets without the expens expensive press that you have? So I do have a rivet video on YouTube. It's also on my website. Most of the video I do show my tabletop press, but at the end I had a package of uh, a handheld press that I used. I think the press was, oh, I don't remember. I want to say around $20. So there are less expensive options. Also, Chicago screws are another alternative to using rivets. They just screw in, but they look similar to rivets. Uh, another question, how often do you change your needle? I haven't changed mine in like six months. I used to leave my needle on my machine for a really long time as well. I tend to change the needle after every sewing project, so about after eight, eight hours of sewing. Um, I, I saw a graphic recently of what a needle looks like through a microscope after it's been used, and it might look sharp to the human eye, but in, in the microscope, it just it starts to break down after a lot of use. So you wanna make sure you're changing the needle regularly because some things like skip stitches and other things might happen with older needles. So make sure you change that needle out pretty often. If not after every eight hours, maybe once a week, maybe every Saturday or have a the same day every week where you change it out. 
Nancy wants to know, do you think the Crimson and Clover bag could be turned into a man's lunch bag? I was trying to, um, I was planning to try it with insole fleece instead of foam. I actually think I've seen a few people make it for a lunch bag. I think probably the large size would be the best for that. And I think it would work great with the insulated fleece. Maybe just omit the zippered pocket and the lid. Uh, I think that would work really good for a, a lunch bag, actually. Anita says, um, could I use fusible fleece on the Baker Street bag? Yeah, you sure could. Um, the the look of the finished bag might be a little bit different since the fleece is not as structured as the foam, but you sure could use it in place of the foam for the Baker Street bag, and it'll be a little bit less bulky of a seam as well as you start to construct the, the body of the bag. All right, a few more questions, and then Danny's going to jump out and, and take off with William, and then me and Violet are are uh, left to our devices. Uh, Carol wants to know what would be a good quantity of fabric to buy if you love it but don't have a bag in mind. I definitely think a yard of exterior fabric and one yard of lining fabric would be a great choice. If you're in the fabric store and you don't know how much fabric to buy or what project you intend to use it for, I have so much fabric in my stash that are just one yard pieces. Most bags won't take more than a yard unless you're making like a really big duffel bag and in fact you might be able to get from that yard of fabric one regular size bag and like a smaller accessory like a zippered pouch. Uh, <laughs> Janet left a comment give me a shout out I'm a newbie hey Janet welcome um, I hope you enjoy the chat and I hope to see you on future chats as well. Uh, Gail says my husband bought me a rivet press for our anniversary that is a great gift I love sewing related gifts and happy anniversary to you. Donna says, will you do a video for the Rockstar bag? I do have it on my list, I think for later this year. So uh, we've been having a lot of requests for the Rockstar bag for a video. So we'll, we'll definitely try to get to that. Okay. How you doing, Violet? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, Danny's taken off. He put the share graphic on the screen. So our challenge for the month of April, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, we invite you to hit the share button and share this video with all of your sewing friends. Our goal for the month of April is for our, all of our live videos to hit at least 100 shares on Facebook. And if you're watching on YouTube, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, but also hit the like button, which is the thumbs up. Our goal for the month of April for all of the live shows is on YouTube, at least 500 shares for each of the videos. So thanks for helping us meet our goals. Um, our gift for to you if we hit our goals is a free crossbody bag pattern a brand new pattern and a free video so if we can hit the goals for the month of april that video and the pattern will be free and it's a crossbody bag in two different sizes i was working on it today drawing out the pattern pieces and i'm really excited about it so hope we hit our goals and we can share the pattern and the video with you so all right um what do you think uh let's talk and maybe answer some more questions okay so violet was working on something over the weekend and you want to show everyone what project you made she thought of this herself and she measured everything herself so tell everyone what this is you want to show them your bunny first and yes. explain okay so i had this bunny i got it for easter and it says violet and it has this really cool purple tulip pink ear background and um, I had it, and I wanted to make a project for one of my stuffed animals, and my other sta uh, stuffed animals are, like, bulky and, like, small, so, like, they would be a okay project to work on, and I found a little pillow that I made, um, maybe three, two years ago, and my mom made me the sleeping bag for one of my stuffed animals, and I wanted to make a project because I only had a pillow. So I made a bed with um, rainbow cork on one side and natural cork on the other. Is the rainbow your favorite cork? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and on the inside, there's three pieces of foam. And I also made this heart background cover. So this is for the bunny? So the bunny lays on the bed? Oh, oh the rainbow side. He lays on the rainbow side. And then he's got the pillow. Good job, Violet. Nice job. I like to see you come in here. And Violet uses my sewing machine, so she uses my Juki all by herself. And uh, never had any problems with it, right? Pretty no. easy to sew with? Wait, I had one problem, though. What was the problem? When I sewed, like, the thread, 
it stopped running because oh, it was out of thread. Her bobbin ran out of thread, so I had to come in here and help her load up the bobbin. But other than that, she did everything herself. Good job. Thank you. All right, so Violet's going to help uh, hold up some fabrics that I got in the mail. Normally, I show fabrics on the Sunday show, Social Sunday, but I was super excited about these particular fabrics. And um, anyway, these are coming out in July. These are by Tula Pink, her new fabric line called De La Luna. So Violet's going to hold these up. I only got four of them, but I had them planned for new patterns and new videos. So this is the first one. This is sort of a medium-sized print. It's got uh, the Venus flytrap on there, which is really awesome a moth fabric so a lot going on over here even though this is not the main print from the fabric line i super love this one and i love the colors sort of a neon green in here so this one's really great this one's your favorite right yep okay so i have two favorites you have two favorites definitely. okay you want to hold up the next one this one's sort of a, a almost a hot pink with um eyes so eyes that are spying all right Number three, we got this uh, fabric with skulls, kind of like sugar skulls with hard eyes. And I love how detailed this print is, even though it's sort of like a monochromatic print. If you fussy cut little bits of it, um, it sort of reveals different things like a lot of florals in here, some leaves. So this one's really great. I think I'm going to use that for a lining. And my favorite print, and you can probably open this one up a little bit more. This one's called uh, Possessed, and it shows, oh, is it upside down? down? Yeah, here, show the other side, here. Wait, no. I got it, here. There you go. So there's three sisters on here. Maybe if we open oh. it up, you can see the last sister. And, gosh, this is, I feel like this is artwork. So, the, you know, the background fabric, even though it's sort of a damask look, there's so much going on. Love this heel. Love the neon green just great. I, I can't wait to make a big bag with this and I already I think I know what what I'll do with the bag but and look at the eye in the middle. Yeah that's awesome. All right so these will be for some new patterns and new videos and I can't wait to work on these and cut these fabrics out but I think I'm gonna have to triple measure before I cut this one out because I only have so much and I can't mess it up with these faces but anyway this is De La Luna by Tula Pink coming out in July. So um ask your quilt shop to order that fabric to make sure they get it in. So usually Danny shows his pick of the week. Violet chose the pick of the week this week, so she's going to put it on the screen. Go ahead, Violet. And tell everyone who made this who made this project. Um Donna Howard made this project. And do you know which what bag it is? It's the Zeppelin pouch. Okay, and why do you like this project? I like this project because I love, first of all, I love the fabric choice and it really matched the zipper and I love that she made it her own by like quilting the bag and I really think it looks really, really nice. And do you know who designed that fabric that was on that? that Tula Pink. Tula Pink. Is that your favorite fabric designer? Yes. Yes? <laughs> All right, so we're, since we're doing a little bit of show and tell tonight, um, I wanted to show one of the new patterns that'll be in the next four-pack video bundle that's coming in May. So that's four brand new videos and four PDF patterns, and one of the patterns in the bundle is a new one that I haven't shown yet. So I thought I might as well show it to you now so you can get sort of a sneak peek. So this is called the Satellite Bag, and this was the version that I made for the step photos in the pattern. I made it sort of a color block version for the step photos because there's a lot going on here in the front of the bag and I wanted uh, the assembly to be super apparent from the instructions so I made this color block just so you could see the three-dimensional pocket as we added it in the instructions. There's a zipper pocket and an accordion pocket on the inside and this flap has a zipper in it and it's a functioning zippered pocket too on the flap. Um, so this was the original version that I made. I had a friend um, Sari Diddy on Instagram, if you're interested in following her, I love her feed on Instagram. She long-armed a piece of turquoise vinyl for me, and it got a little dirty during our construction in our house, but I love how she quilted a really large design on this. You could see the quilting on the back as well. And this is that same pattern, uh, the satellite bag. And my friend Wendy actually sent me this bag, which I got yesterday. So in case you're watching Wendy... Uh, oh, this came out awesome. Normally I don't like to share sports themed type things on the show just because maybe your team is an enemy of my team and I don't want any uh, drama there. But um, anyway, Wendy made this. My machine is straight stitch, stitch only. So 
when I saw that Wendy had made uh, this bag with uh, Toronto Blue Jays fabric, I knew I needed to have the same thing, but for my local team. So Wendy stitched uh, sort of a baseball look on the flap. Um, she incorporated that in the straps as well. And I just super love how this bag came out. So thanks so much, Wendy. And actually the vinyl that she used for the flap is sort of textured and it reminds me of an actual baseball. So um, again, love this bag. Wendy used uh, a tag from Emmeline Bags on the back and this tag is really easy to install. It just has prongs, kind of like a magnetic snap. So um, yeah, super love this bag. Again, that's the satellite bag that'll be coming out in May as part of the next four pack video bundle. And never fear if you're only interested in one of the new videos from the four pack, those will be for sale individually as well. Although if you're interested in several of them, the four pack will be a really great deal. So let's get to some more questions. Um, I'm going to put some on the screen or I'm going to try my best normally. Um, Danny handles this, so um, I'll try to make it as smooth as possible. I saw a question before we started. Donna wanted to know, can you use um, a fusible stabilizer on cork fabric? So generally, I don't like to iron cork fabric and for sure don't let the iron touch the right side of the cork. But since it's backed with a cotton polyester blend fabric, it's okay to add interfacing on the back as long as you're careful. I would recommend a pressing cloth. I made an airplane bag a couple months ago. Do you want to maybe grab, grab the airplane bag? Do you know which one it is with the mermaids on it? It's on the floor. You'll find it. Yeah. Um, on the airplane bag, I used cork for the accents and I actually ironed a bit of Shape Flex and I had some Peltex in that sandwich. And again, just be really careful. If you're not sure, you can always test a little swatch out before you cut into a bigger piece of cork. Yeah, Violet brought the airplane bag. So I used, you want to take the question off the screen? Do you know how to do that? Yes. Sir. Okay. She's going to take the question off the screen so you can see it. But, um, the bottom of this bag is cork fabric and I've got interfacing here. So shape flex and Peltex in the bottom. Again, just be careful and you'll be fine. All right, thanks Violet. You're welcome. All right, let me find another question to put on the screen. Um, we already answered the question about how much fabric to buy. I saw a question about uh, what's my favorite online fabric shop. So rather than searching for that, I'll just answer it. I'm sorry if I don't remember who asked that question. My favorite online fabric shops are Stash Fabrics, Hawthorne Threads, Fat Quarter Shop. I'm sure there's tons others that I've forgotten to mention, but again, that's Stash Fabrics, Hawthorne Threads, um, that, that's Hawthorne with an E at the end of the word Hawthorne, HawthorneThreads.com, and Fat Quarter Shop. You have a question? Yes. Okay, that's a good question. Um, Dawn wanted to know, is your fabric still available? So. I designed those two fabric lines several years ago. It was Jungle Avenue and Fantasia for Art Gallery Fabrics. Uh, those are both out of print, but I see some online still, especially on Etsy or Hawthorne Threads, so you might still be able to find some of those. Um, Doreen wants to know, do you have a video for the Sublime Bag? Yeah, uh, yes, I actually do. If you go to SoSweetness.com, click on the graphic at the top of the screen. There's a big graphic that says online workshops and you'll find the sublime bag right there. All right. Any other questions do you see? Mm, I see a lot of questions. Okay. You want to ask me first before you, uh, um, yeah. Oh, here's a good question. Oh, one? yeah. Go ahead. Put that one on the screen. Karen wants to know, is the cork fabric different to work with than other fabric? Is it just plain fabric with a cork design? So, uh, the cork that I sell is cork, bonded to a, a background fabric, which is a cotton polyester blend. I think I've got some over here. That you have I... some like scraps there. I have some scraps. Used. Okay. Violet used this rainbow cork, so it's just a bit of a scrap. Um, but this is actual cork from a cork tree. The back of the fabric is a cotton polyester blend. It's really flexible. It's about 0 0.08 millimeters thickness, so it's a little bit thicker than say like a canvas fabric but I find that it's easy to work with and you can use it either with or without interfacing. I like using the same interfacing for exterior fabric as called for in the bag pattern, unless you're using accents or straps and then you can cut it raw. So by cut it raw, I just mean you don't need to sew it right sides together. You can just cut your, say your handle tabs out of the fabric and just leave them as is. I don't think I have any, I don't think I have any examples to show you, but um, it's easy to sew with most climates 
climates, depending on where you live, you can use your regular sewing machine foot. If it's sort of a humid time of the year, you might need to swap out to either a walking foot or a Teflon foot. But a lot of times you can just use your regular sewing machine foot. This one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, there was a question, are you reaching those goals? So we had some goals for the month of April for shares on Facebook and likes on YouTube. So far we've hit the goals, but we don't want to get off track. So uh, please continue to share and like on YouTube. And uh, we're, I'm really excited about that new crossbody bag. And <laughs> like I said, I started working on it already. So hopefully maybe on Sunday or next Tuesday, I can show you a finished bag, what it looks like. And again, that'll be in two different sizes. <laughs> Go ahead. Violet wants to put this comment up on the screen. Kathy says, hit the button bag, ladies and bag dudes. Thanks so much for sharing and liking. Um, I have another question I'm going to put on the screen. Diane says, will you be having airplane kits available soon? I apologize. Our kits have been going quickly recently, and because we're trying to get month three of Core Club out, I've actually had to hire my mom. My mom's retiring in July, and I had to hire my mom to start packaging the kits because we're, I wouldn't say we're falling behind, but we just need some extra help. So my mom's going to be taking care of the kits. She did some Crimson and Clover kits for me the other day, and she's going to be restocking our airplane bag kits and our Minikins Notions kits. So um, I'm sure my parents are watching because they usually do. Uh, my dad likes to leave funny comments uh, for us in the chat. <laughs> That was the good question. Yeah, I wanted to answer that yeah. one. It was the one on the first. Yeah, Anne says, Hi, Sarah, I have some denim I want to use as the accent on a Sublime bag. Do I turn the edge under like needle turn or just use fusible interfacing on the back and not worry about fraying? So that's a great question. So in the Sublime bag, I give instructions for using quilting cotton, and I believe those instructions were to sew the accents right sides together. Since the denim is a little bit thicker than regular quilting cotton, I would suggest... Um, for example, on the accent on the top of the bag to turn under the fabric by a quarter of an inch and the accent on the bottom of the bag, um, same thing, the, the top edge, turn it under a quarter of an inch. Um, when turning accents, if it's not a straight edge, you can always machine baste the edge that you need to turn under. The machine basting will help you get an edge to turn the fabric uh, so that it's turned under. You can also use that longer basting stitch and kind of pull your threads up at the end, which will also kind of start to pull the fabric under so that you can just turn it um, so that that edge is underneath the wrong side of the fabric. But that's a really good question about the denim. Let's see. Um, okay, we can put that on there. Anne wants to know, I received a package with the Stacey Hue fabric with the Boston Terriers and other pups and a matching piece with little bones all over it. I can't decide which bag to make. Um, if it's a smaller scale print, maybe one of the minikins. Um, I don't know. It sounds like you had a couple coordinating fabrics in there. So maybe the main print with the dogs and the bones on the side. I think that would be really cute. Got another question? Yeah, good question. Melissa wanted to know, anyone know where I can get glitter vinyl that's not too pricey? We actually sell them in the shop. It's thinner than the cork fabric. So it's about 0 0.06 millimeters in thickness. Pretty thin. It's backed with a canvas, so it's really easy to sew, and the glitter is actually incorporated within the, the vinyl, so the glitter just doesn't sit on top of the fabric. So um, it's really durable and easy to use, and we have 22 different colors. So we sell it in half-yard pieces, which are 18 by 54 inches wide, and those are, <laughs> bless you, you. Uh, 1225 a piece for the glitter vinyl, if you're interested in that. Um, Deb, I'm going to put this question on the screen. Any more beginner bags coming out? Actually, that crossbody bag will be perfect for a beginner bag, and I, I put some interesting details in it. I haven't written the instructions yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be around 20 steps, so a really quick sew, which would be great for beginners as well as people who sew for craft fairs or markets and things like that because I think the key for sewing for craft fairs is making things that look nice but also things that are fast to sew and don't need a lot of supplies. So this bag will definitely be it. And it's going to come together really fast. So I'm really excited about it. Hopefully I'll have something to show you uh, pretty soon about that. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? <laughs> oh, you might have a question. Ah, okay. Good. Good question. Uh, Corey wants to know, where can I purchase clear vinyl for the iSpy bag? So um, I used... 
eight gauge vinyl in my samples. You can use a, I have a thicker gauge as well, maybe a 12 gauge instead if you prefer. I started off with the eight gauge because I wanted to make sure it would be um, easily sewable for all skill levels. Uh, if you live in the US, your local big box store should have it like a Joann Fabrics. Um, yeah, but it's pretty easy to find and it comes by the yard and I think it's about 54 inches wide so you can get a lot of use out of your yardage. <laughs> Go honey. Violet loves dogs, so she picked this comment out. Colleen says, uh, for some reason, my dog Lincoln is totally watching you guys acting like he's really listening. Oh, that's so funny. And Violet likes that. Um, so I have a question for you, Violet, real quick. Okay. Um, what do you like about sewing? I like that you could create, like, out-of-the-box things. So, like, if you see something at the store that you really like, but you would change some things, mm -hmm. then you could, like, modify them to your own style or your own colors. And yeah, good, good job, Violet. Um, I had a question from, we'll get, yeah, we'll check that one next. Um, Kaylee says, I would love to hear about how you organize your bag making supplies from fabric to hardware to tools. That's a great question. Um, as far as the tools go, I have uh, three of these little containers with all my sewing tools, like my turning tool, which I love. Uh, I have a little rotary cutter in here. So I think these were from Target in the um, home goods section, like where the toothbrush stuff is for the bathroom. And I just have three of these containers on my desk with the tools. I have something that I purchased from the hardware store. Maybe I'll show that on the show on Sunday. It's in the basement, but it's a, a small plastic um, wall mount with little plastic drawers. And each hardware is in a different drawer, and I've labeled all of the drawers. So it was just something inexpensive from the hardware store. It was probably less than $20. Um, the rest of my stuff, I'm not terribly organized. I have all my fabric organized by either fabric designer or the baskets have the solid colors. Those baskets back there are from Amazon. Um, yeah, I'm not super organized, but at least I have my tools and uh, my hardware separated. Uh, jo Lynn says, how hard is the Renegade bag for a beginner? I would say it's, most of my bags are geared toward the intermediate skill level, but with the videos, I feel like the videos make um, bags more accessible to any skill level. And I would say the Renegade bag would be on the easier side. It's less than 30 steps and it doesn't use any purse hardware. So um, it's just using attaching the accents and the straps and then putting the zipper in and starting to assemble the bag. So that's one of my favorite ones. Um, all right, let's find some other questions. Sorry, we're gonna, Violet and I are trying the best we can. Usually Danny goes through all these and uh, puts these on the screen, but we'll get to, how about three more questions? Okay. Yeah? Um, oh, I had another question I wanted to ask you. Let's see. Um, what TV show do you watch when you are sewing? I watch a series of unfortunate events. Um, where do you watch, where do you find that, that TV show? You can find it on Netflix, and it's a Netflix original. It's based off of the book, and the one, the book series, and the one movie. And even though I already watched them, they do really good TV shows. So I watch them over and over, and I wait till the next series comes out. The la the recent series was on the 30th. And what, like, just in like three sent, two or three sentences, what is it about? Your favorite show? My favorite show? Well, the, what the show you just talked about? Like, what's the the um, a summary? Okay. Of what happens in the show? So it's about these three children, and their parents perished in a fire, and they go to different caretakers, cause um, there's this one caretaker. Where he just wants their fortune because they were they had a very uh, very their parents were rich so he yeah, wanted they, their money yeah and then he tried to take their money and then they went off to new so basically bad caretakers. things bad things happen to them no matter what and that's why it's called a series of unfortunate events right and the person that wants all the money he keeps like trying to murder the other people <laughs> that are watching them. Nice. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else has watched that, but it's on Netflix and it just came out again and it's Violet's favorite show. Okay, so I'm going to put one more question on there and uh, oh. let's see. <laughs> Lemony Snicket. Yep. Hang on to that one because I just put a question on the screen. Barbara wants to know what size rivets do we need to order? So 
Most of the time I use the eight millimeter rivets. I have purchased the nine millimeter rivets for a, a really thick, like say if the handle's folded over, but 90% of the time I use the eight millimeter rivets if that helps. I saw a question about the Juki. So I have a Juki 2010. Sherry wants to know, do you ever use the needle plate for thick fabrics? And if so, do you just always use that one or do you swap between the two needle plates depending on thin or thick fabrics used? So great question. That machine comes with the uh, plate for thin fabrics, which is just like a, a tiny little needle hole. The plate for the thick fabrics is the small needle hole, just slightly larger. So it's not like a huge opening. It's like, um, I'm not sure, maybe an eighth of an inch circle all the way around. I bought that thick fabric needle plate, uh, I want to say a couple years ago, and I just left it on. So I can still piece quilt blocks with that same plate. So I don't switch between the two plates. And that thick needle plate, I think I spent about $100 on it. So I think well worth it. Um, I was having some trouble with really, really thick bags, like top stitching. Sometimes the needle doesn't go in straight because of the thickness, and that thick needle plate really helped. So uh, I swapped to that plate, and I haven't switched it back. You have a question on Oh, you no. just want to put that comment on there? Go ahead. Can I put another one, too? Um, let's see. Let's it see. says I love it. Oh, okay, sure. You can put another comment well, on there. What about this one, too? Is there a question? And I have a question right there. Okay, yes, put that one on there. Okay. Okay, so I think we'll. this will be the last question for the night, if that's okay with you. Um, Jen wants to know, where's a good place to purchase hardware? So I love buying hardware from Emmeline Bags. That's emmelinebags.com. She's actually located in Canada, but the, I find the shipping very reasonable. Um, there's bulk t discounts as well, and it's probably the biggest selection of purse hardware I've ever, I've ever seen in different finishes. So not only silver gold, gunmetal, um, there's a lovely rose gold hardware that she has in a lot of the different pieces and also um, a rainbow finish, which is amazing. And I'm going to have to buy some more of the rainbow finish hardware. Um, but anyway, I think that'll be the last question. You can put that comment on. Go ahead. Violet's proud of herself. So Violet ran the technology tonight. She learned how to do it. Um, she's going to be doing some more uh, with the Sunday show. The Sunday show has a lot going on with different uh, screen views and stuff like that. So Violet is our um, videographer in training. So great job, Violet, tonight. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all the questions live, but if you have another question for me, uh, I hope you'll join the Facebook group. You can ask me there. You can drop me an email or you can join us again uh, next Tuesday. So our next Ask Sarah show will be next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll see you then and happy sewing. Thank you.